Hey guys, I'm Jake Machaney with Unknown Munitions. I have Ken Trapp here from Salmon River Solutions, and today we are here to show you how to measure your rifle for the proper muzzle brake. So there's several things that you're going to need to know. Uh, we're going to walk you through basically five different pieces of information that you're going to want to know uh, in order to choose the right muzzle brake. So go ahead, Ken. Yeah, so first off, we're going to start with caliber. So you say 6.5 millimeter, 264. 7mm, 284, uh, 308, and 338, pretty much our standards. Uh, so yeah, say you buy a 6.5 Creedmoor, that's a 264, so that's the bore option that you need to order a brake with. Uh, next, you cover uh, muzzle OD. So to measure your muzzle OD, calipers make it pretty easy. It's challenging to me measure it any other way, but you're gonna take calipers, measure around just where it comes up to the shoulder of the thread. So this is 8, 828. Mm -hmm. So you want a brake that is slightly larger than that diameter. Uh, that way it's not tapering down to your muzzle brake. It looks funky when you do that. So like you don't want, you don't want this brake for this barrel here. It's gonna look a little funny. Yeah, that's a 760 OD. So it would have a sharp step down. Wouldn't look good. Okay. Uh, next, you got thread pattern. So I know this is already 5H24, but I'll throw calipers on it. You're going to measure the outside of the threads. And 5H24 really is probably one of the most common muzzle threads out there, especially for uh, aftermarket rifles. Uh, but 5 divided by 8 is basically 0.625 inches. Yeah, so you're going to be around 618 to 624 is probably about that thread range. Uh, so if you were half 28, you would see 0.500-ish. Yeah, slightly under, point, slightly under 0 0.500. What are some uh, other uh, common muzzle threads they might see for like production rifles? Uh, 916 to 24 is a pretty common one. Uh, some 916 to 28 and then uh, 3 quarter 24 also. Okay. So basically in any of those fractions that we're talking about, you can take the small number, divide it by the big number and come up with in your calculator, you know, 3 quarter is 0.750. Uh, you know, 716s, 916s, all that good stuff. Uh, there are actually some metric muzzle threads as well. Like if you get into a Browning rifle, it might be an M13 thread. So if you find that the fraction you're coming up with doesn't exactly meet one of those 5 8 3 quarter half type of fractions, uh, switch your caliper over to metric threads, or I'm sorry, metric measurements. And once you switch it over to metric, you may find that your threads line up almost exactly with like an M13. Uh, another thing about the caliper, you don't have to, this is basically a top of the line Meditoyo AOS Digimatic caliper. We use a lot of these in the shop for uh, machining purposes, for measuring ammunition. If you're looking for the best of the best type of caliper, just go all out. This is probably 140 bucks or so on, the, on our website. Um, but you can go all the way down to a $20, $15 type of, let's just call it a Chinese knockoff on Amazon or whatever you'd like, and that's going to get the job done. So don't, you don't have to run out and jump on this guy. If you don't have a, a, a digital caliper, spend 15 bucks on Amazon and, and get one for yourself. So what else we got to do? Yeah, so after that, uh, you have material. So we make brakes in stainless steel and titanium. So you got to figure out what your actual goal is. Do you want to make it as lightweight as possible, or do you want to maybe save a little bit, save a little bit of money and run stainless? And across the pro line of brakes, basically stainless steel is about 25% off of the cost of titanium. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Roughly 25% cheaper for stainless over titanium. There's really no, there's really no other functional advantage of titanium other than weight. So if weight is not a concern for you, definitely uh, jump down to that stainless version. Yeah. And then uh, last thing is a uh, self timer or not non self timer. So, this brake right here, it's a non-self timer, so there's no timing nut. Then you have one with a timing nut. So the self timer, you can install easily in about two minutes yourself. This brake, you have to actually take to a gunsmith and you might throw it onto your barrel. You don't want your ports like that, it's gonna blast you in the face. So they have to shave off material until your brake bottoms out mm -hmm. tight to where your ports are parallel to your rifle. Yeah, that's definitely unique to a side port style of muzzle brake. You need those side ports to be level with the ground. If they're off in any way, that may catch a rifle when you're going to shoot. Uh, put some torque on there you're not looking for. Uh, so that self-timing nut, like Ken's talking about, it makes it so you can just spin this guy on. And there the ports are crooked, but you would back it off until they're level. 
use a level once your rifle's leveled, and then you would tighten this nut down and basically lock the brake in position right there. So that would be the big difference between a self-timer and a non-self-timer is whether or not you want to do it in your garage, uh, the ability to do it yourself, and, and maybe even move the brake from rifle to rifle. But just to kind of recap, so the things you need to, things you need to know to properly order a muzzle brake would be the cartridge that you're sending down the barrel, so a 6.5 millimeter of some kind, PRC, Creedmoor, uh, muzzle OD, which is measuring with a caliper at the point where the brake would meet the shoulder on your barrel. Uh, what else? Uh, you got thread pattern. Um, we didn't really go over TPI. TPI means threads per inch. So most of the brakes, you only have one TPI. 916th, for example, though, you have uh, 24 pitch and 28 pitch. So that's just 28 threads per inch or 24 threads per inch. Easiest way to do that, if you have half inch of thread here, you can count the threads that travel over half an inch and double that. So this is 5 8 24. So if I counted 12 threads over half an inch, you double that, you have a 24 pitch. Mm -hmm. You could also buy a, a fairly cheap tool on Amazon, be a, a thread pitch gauge set. Yeah. Yeah. They make a little deal where you fold out each. It's got some hooks on it that look like threads on a screw, and you would simply place that thread pitch gauge up next to your threads until you find the one that lines up correctly where everything is even, and then that would be your, your threads per inch. Yep, and then we had a uh, material, stainless steel or titanium. Yep. And then, yeah, self-timers or not. Uh, most people go with self-timers just because ease of install. And if you're going to remove your brake pretty often, uh, we usually recommend self-timers also. So we have this Pro line of brakes. So SS Pro would be stainless steel, TI Pro would be titanium. And we really do have a complete lineup that will fit almost any application you could need. Uh, these are found, we, we have dealer sales available if you reach out to sales at unknownmunitions.com. Uh, these brakes are, are for sale across a, a variety of dealers at this point. Uh, Salmon River Solutions, Rock Slide, Unknown Munitions, you could jump on there, check out the whole lineup. If you guys are having a difficult time figuring out your thread pattern on your muzzle, uh, if you have some type of factory rifle, you could just go on the factory rifle producer's website, whether it be Christensen. Almost every Christensen is 5H24. Almost every custom rifle will generally be 5H24. Uh, but if you have a Browning or a Remington 700 or a Teak or whatever it might be, uh, look at the production, the manufacturer's website, or even give them a call with your rifle serial number, and they may be able to tell you uh, what thread pattern that rifle shipped with. We also have in-house Cerakote. Uh, we do have black Cerakote options available on, on all the self-timing brakes. If you want a unique color to kind of match a combo that you already have going on your rifle, uh, you can just put that in the notes and we'll take care of it for you. But again, this is the pro line of brakes found on Unknown Munitions, Salmon River Solutions, and Rock Slide, so check it out.